Hey, welcome back to another video. This is going to be my Tailwind and Alpine JS NavTab video. I've been thinking about making this video for quite a while. I actually have a blog post you can find in the description that has gained decent popularity on, on search engines or well, mostly Google, of course. Um, and so I figured I'd, I'd make a video on this because people seem to be interested in how to do this with Alpine. There are some people that complain um, that Alpine's not the right choice. And of course, if you're using something like Viewer React, it's much more powerful uh, and it's much easier to actually create components with that. This feels like throwing logic into just HTML markup and having to copy and paste it. And it gets kind of like hacky, I guess, um, kind of kind of gross if you're, if you're using it multiple times uh, because you have to manage the content manually within HTML and it's not really passed in as props. But for the purpose of small projects like I build, I love Alpine for its simplicity. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to build uh, a nav tab that is interactive with Alpine.js. Um, so I guess we can get started. This is the basic markdown that I have in HTML, right? So I have the nav tab content, I have the tabs, and here is the current state of it. Of course, it doesn't work. It just looks sort of pretty. Um, I have Tailwind, Alpine, and a Google font here. I don't recommend using it like this. Obviously, use NPM. I mention that every time. Um, you want to optimize that if you're going to be using it in something production, right? For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to put these guys in here so it's more obvious what our content is, where it is, and you know what it's doing. So you can see tab three is here, tab two is here, tab one is here. The content is stacked because it's not being hidden from anything. So if we get started, the basic way that Alpine works is you find the outer component, I well, outer container uh, in HTML that you want to house your component. Uh, and you just declare an X data in there. And that takes uh, like a JSON format. Um, I'm going to start by basically declaring open tab. And the reason, whoops, JSON format. Uh, the reason I want to declare open tab is because I obviously want to track which tab is open. And I'm going to start with index one. You could use strings to track this. I'm not sure why you would, uh, because then you, there's going to be a whole bunch of like comparisons done within each tab to figure out what should be open, what should be shown, what should be styled a certain way. Uh, it's going to get really annoying to see strings. So I'm just going to use uh, indexes, uh, obviously one, two, and three. I'm also going to declare active classes. Uh, and the reason I want to declare these is because I want to store these big styles uh, just up top, it's easier for me to see, it's easier for me to understand, uh, and it's going to be nice and clear for you, hopefully, to see what's going on. Uh, if I declare inactive classes here, basically what I want these to do is to um, hold the styles of the buttons on top of the nav tab depending on uh, their state. So if, uh, if a nav tab is open or currently selected rather, meaning that if, uh, if, if the index of that tab is currently the index set within X data, I want active classes to be set on that element. So it's, it's going to be border left, border top, border right, rounded top, text blue 700. Otherwise I want it to be text blue 500 and text blue 800 on hover. This of course is subjective. I mean, it, it looks okay, not pretty, not perfect, but it'll show the uh, it'll show some cool features of uh, Alpine. So I wanted to show that. So that's the X data. That's fine. Let's move on to the actual content themselves. So if you look here, nothing has changed. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, it, it's tracking data, but that data is not changing, so it's not actually reactive in any way. We can use X show. Of course, if, you're, if you've used Viewer React, which I'm sure you have, you're probably pretty familiar with, with these concepts. X show basically is like, uh, I can, I'm gonna be able to compare open tab to an index. So if open tab is one, show this content, otherwise do not show this element, right? So if I copy and paste, I'm on my laptop, so bear with me. As you can see, nothing works, but we're only showing tab one, and that's because open tab default is index one. So how do we make this this actually change, right? 
Um, well, it's pretty simple. We just use the at click on the list element here because each of these li uh, elements is, is one of these top nav tab buttons. So if I use at click and within here, just put open, whoops, open tab is equal to one. When this element is clicked, it's gonna set open tab in our data to one. Uh, I'm sure you can see where this is going. If I, if I click this element, I want it to be two. This element, I want it to be three. If I refresh, tab one is open, tab two, tab three. Okay, so it works. That's the basic functionality. But why, why did we declare active classes and inactive classes? Well, it's not immediately obvious which one's supposed or which tab is open or closed. If, if we didn't have these in here, we'd have no idea. So the way I do this is by actually just binding classes here. Uh, this is also very similar to view, uh, probably React too. Uh, within this, this class binding, I guess you can say, I'm not sure what the technical term is, uh, we, can, we can define like a ternary operator, like a JavaScript kind of, um, if this, then this, else that. Uh, we're gonna use this to basically check which, open, which tab is open. If it's the current one, then we're gonna make sure that the current classes are set to active classes otherwise inactive classes. Sounds really complex, but basically it's, it goes like this. Open tab is equal to one. If this is true, active classes. If it's not true, inactive classes. Let's see if that works. As you can see, it sure does. So there's no hover effect when it's open. There is one when it's not open. When it's open, you can see that it gets a little bit smaller uh, and that's what we're looking for. So if I copy this and just change the indexes, you can see that you can definitely tell which tab is open. And that's what we're looking for. Now, um, I do have something on my other monitor because this was built a while ago where I was binding a class here that I don't remember what it did, but I'm gonna try it anyways. So this is another way of basically um, using logic to add a class to something. Open tab is equal to one. So this class will only be added to the classes if open tab is equal to one. Uh, okay. So what this class does is basically just positions the element enough to remove that border at the bottom of it, which just makes it look a lot better. So if I copy this, you get the point basically, it's just a bunch of copying. Uh, and this is why people argue that Alpine is not that great for, for most projects. And in some cases I'll agree, but there you go. That's the finished product. So uh, let me know if you have any ideas on other projects I could be building. I think I'm gonna move over to more Laravel stuff that's more in my wheelhouse. Um, I, I work with Laravel on a daily basis and would love to go through a project start to finish, maybe a little bit of view, um, and, and the new Laravel stuff, Fortify, uh, Jetstream, that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in any of that, maybe career talk, I don't know. Um, I'm open to making videos. If you're, if you enjoy the content, please do consider subscribing. I enjoy making videos and would love to have you on board. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next one.